Welcome to this screencast. During th this screencast, I will cover uh, interactive supercomputing with Dask and Jupyter. Dask is a Python uh, uh, library for parallel programming. Uh, you can easily deploy it on your machine, in the cloud, or on high-performance uh, computing systems. Uh, to deploy a Dask on high-performance computing systems, you will need to use a package called uh, Dask Job Queue. So Dask Job Queue allows users to deploy Dask on HPC systems um, uh, that uses uh, queuing systems such as PBS, Slurm, Moab, LSF. It was created as a spin-off of the Pangeo project. Uh, it provides high-level uh, Python interface, as we will see. So let's now switch gears and actually look at uh, Dask Job Queue in action. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually log in into a Jupyter Hub uh, that is running on Cheyenne Supercomputer. Once I'm logged in, I will have to specify the project account to use. And I'm going to... Um, reduce the wall time to 40 minutes, and then I will click Spawn. At this point, there's nothing we can really do other than just uh, waiting. It might take a few seconds or a minute, depending on how busy the queuing system is. Uh, so what I just did is just asked Jupyter Hub to spawn uh, uh, a Jupyter Notebook server uh, on one of the computer not on the supercomputer. Um, so now my server is ready. Um, so for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the gridded ensemble precipitation and temperature estimates over the contiguous United States. This is a data set that consists of a hundred member ensemble of precipitation and temperature data. There's a link to the data set if you're interested. Um, uh, one more thing. Uh, try this notebook. Try running this notebook in the cloud. Uh, from this link. So the first thing I'm gonna do is import some packages. Uh, and from Dash Job Queue, I'm going to import the PBS cluster class, and I'm going to instantiate this class with. Uh, one process, uh, 36 threads, uh, 109 gigabytes. That is going to be shared among 36 uh, threads for a wall time of, let me do, 30 minutes. Um, this is basically me describing what I want every time that I want to talk to the queuing system. Uh, and then I tell Dask to scale between, let me change this number to um, scale between 10 and uh, maybe 20 uh, uh, workers. Now let's create the cluster object. Uh, so this is gonna take some time to actually start seeing the workers, but we can still go ahead and look at some other things. Uh, in this case, it, let's just look at the job script. This is actually the script that gets executed every time that uh, Dask request resources from the queuing system. Uh, it matches uh, what you describe uh, here. Okay, so now let's connect our client to this cluster. Even though we don't have workers, we can still go ahead and actually do that. Uh, it will just get updated. So the next thing to do is open the dataset. To load the dataset, we're going to use uh, X-Array, uh, which is a Python uh, package. Uh, and under the hood, this dataset is stored using the czar format. This format works really well in the cloud, but uh, surprisingly, it works really well on uh, high-performance uh, computing uh, systems as well. So the dataset has dimensions of time, latitude, longitude, and ensemble member. So even though I don't have workers, I can still go ahead and actually uh, open the czar store. Uh, basically look at the metadata. For this, I don't need uh, to have the Dask workers. Uh, I can look at uh, the size of the dataset. 
This is close to 1.7 terabytes. I can print uh, the metadata of the dataset. Uh, you can see that we have uh, three main variables, precipitation, the mean temperature, and the uh, temperature range. Um, and this is for 100 ensemble members for 13,500 uh, days. As you can see, we're getting workers uh, over time. So one of the things that I'm going to do is actually uh, look at uh, the mask, which basically gives us like an idea of our spatial domain, uh, in this case, the elevation. Uh, so you can see that on the east coast you have uh, points with higher uh, higher elevation compared to uh, the east coast. So the next task is actually to quantify the ensemble uncertainty for a single day. So basically we select one day, we compute the mean, uh, so we select one day uh, and we uh, select the, the mean temperature for that day and then we compute the mean across the ensemble members, and we subtract that from uh, the, the the mean temperature for that day, and then we compute the standard deviation of that. Uh, this returns very quickly because nothing really happened there. We just uh, uh, executed a lazy uh, uh, statement at that point. And now let's actually plot. This is when actually the computation gets triggered. Um, as you can see, um, the remote and topographically complex areas, uh, especially in the west coast and in the northern part of the country, northeast part of the country, um, tend to have larger uncertainty, uncertainties in this data set. The next task is to compute the intra-ensemble range, uh, which basically is uh, computed by taking the, by subtracting the minimum from the maximum uh, um, for the uh, the mean temperature across time. So we do that again. This expression above didn't actually compute anything. They just built the task graph. Let's now call persist to actually trigger the computation. As you can see, it's going to take some time, but we're going to start seeing some activity on here for the task graph. Uh, the next thing is actually to uh, plot uh, this spread, basically the intra uh, ensemble range in the mean annual temperature. Let's just execute that as the computation happens. You can see that our computation is really CPU bound. Um, so the next task is to compute the average seasonal snowfall. So in this case, we're just going to look at the first four ensemble uh, members and make some maps out of that. OK, so this is going to take a few seconds, depending on uh, how many uh, workers we have. But we can see it's it's pretty fast, uh, considering that we're doing this on uh, one point uh, seven terabytes of data. It's going to take a few seconds. Um, and once this is done, the next thing we're going to do is actually extract a time series from uh, like a particular uh, location, in this case, a region, and look at the annual maximum precipitation events for that particular location. Uh, for this, uh, demonstration, I'm going to look at uh, the Austin uh, area. Uh, so in this case, I just provide like a buffer so that I can, I can get uh, most of the longitude and latitude uh, values covered by that particular region. Um, okay, so now pretty much the computation for the seasonal snow, seasonal snowfall is done, it's just that now, uh, yeah. so the, the data is just being sent to the browser uh, so that my plotlet can actually uh, plot it. 
Uh, let's execute this cell in the meantime. Um, so the next thing that we do is basically get the precipitation, uh, resample uh, to annual. So remember we have our uh, our, in, our initial frequency for the data is actually daily, and now I'll compute the maximum across time. And then once this is done, we actually compute the maximum across the latitude and the longitude, and then we persist that so that we can uh, plot it uh, quickly. Okay, yeah, let's just execute this as well. And then in the meantime, let's go back to this uh, seasonal snowfall totals. As you can see, as the year progresses, uh, you can see more uh, uh, snowfall uh, on, some, on some part of the west coast and the east coast. And as the, as the year progresses, then the, snow, the amount of snowfall uh, decreases. Uh, even in some uh, season, it's close to zero, and this is uh, uh, consistent across the forty, uh, the four ensemble members that we looked at. So now let's uh, look at uh, the maximum precipitation near uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, the computation is still ongoing, uh, but it should be done uh, anytime soon. Um, so now at this point, uh, we should have a computation done uh, any time uh, from now. Um, and as you can see, our cluster size has uh, grown uh, considerably compared to what we started with. Uh, okay, so now we have the the maximum precipitation near uh, Austin, Texas uh, for all the 40 ensemble members. Uh, so basically each line here corresponds to an ensemble member. So if you want to, you can just move the cursor around uh, and then it will show you what ensemble member you're looking at uh, and what time. So at this point, if we wanted to, uh, we could just uh, go on and ask more questions, or if we don't do anything, Dask will just scale down to whatever the minimum we specified. But at this point, I'm done, so I'm just going to close the cluster and the client. But before doing that, let's look at how many uh, workers we have. Now we have 14 workers uh, with 1.5 terabytes of memory uh, and the 14 workers are running uh, on 500 threads. So now let's just close this and uh, that would be it. So now uh, this should go away because basically we close the class and the client. Uh, all right, that's it for today. Thank you.